as these last almost four decades have gone by, I think people had a chance to uh, get to know the real nature of this regime, um, are today fully aware of all the shortcomings in terms of where they are at, from political repression to economic hardship to the environmental destruction. And most importantly, I think a sense of being ostracized from the world community as opposed to be, uh, you know, participating in the world community. And I think the legacy of my father and my grandfather in terms of the architects of a modern Iran and where they were taking the country, which is the opposite of what this regime has practically done, is one of the reasons that there is a sense of nostalgia but also a sense of comparison and say, well, you know, the track record speaks for itself. Unfortunately, because this regime is irreformable in the sense that it does not allow for any kind of method within the system, within the body of the law, within the Constitution to bring any legislation, to modify anything, it would be impossible to expect that reform can come from within. I say reform. I'm not saying change. I'm talking about reform. Change has to occur on the basis of a popular uprising in the form of civil disobedience, uh, uh, you know, the labor strikes, anything that will force the regime backwards to the point of collapse because this regime is not to voluntarily concede power. What I believe is that the content of the future regime has to be based on a secular democratic system where there's a clear separation of religion from government without which you cannot have a true uh, egalitarian democracy in the sense that any uh, other religion or ethnicity or groups will be um, discriminated against or what have you. Specific groups that belong to a particular... The proof is in the pudding. People do value that. This is a regime that tried to destroy our Iranian hood, if I could put it this way. And Iranians do value their sense of national identity. And somehow it is tied with the history of that country and the monarchic establishment. I mean, who, who is, who, where is this democracy? I've lived for most of my life in democratic countries in the West. So the values of liberty, the values of democracy, the values of human rights are embedded in the core of my value system. And I would like that for my country. Um, and I think a lot of my compatriots today, as a result of all the hardship that they have endured, realize that unless we are able to implement a system that guarantees citizens' rights, from their human rights to their political rights to their religious rights to their opinion, everything included, you cannot have a progressive, modern, free society. It's as simple as that. And I think Iranians have had throughout history uh, a tendency to look back more than to look forward. This generation proves me otherwise. I think this is a generation that recognizes where they have come from, why are they stuck in this, but where do they want to go? And that's the most important part. Where do they want to go? My only preoccupation is to liberate Iran. I'm not running for office. I don't expect or seek anything. If tomorrow my compatriots say, hey, listen, we need you to stick around a bit longer. We need you to help us X, Y, and Z. It is my duty to, uh, uh, to support my country the best way I can. But right now, as I speak to you, for me, the finish line is the day where finally Iranians can go to the bo election booth and vote the future destiny of their country by electing the people who will redraft the new constitution that will propose the final form that the government could have, the people will, on a referendum, decide it. And at the end of that process, we finally will have, for the first time in our history, by the free will and free vote of our compatriots, the formation of a new, truly democratic system. If you want to, let's say, target the IRGC right now in terms of sanction, because they are, in fact, a major problem, but it should not come across as you are c we are condemning the entire membership of the RGC because, as I said, a lot of them are not there. In, the, in today's narrative, that is not clear. In today's narrative, we say we are putting sanctions on the RGC, it's blanket. Mm -hmm. 
It is important, therefore, to make the distinction between those who are still at the service of the regime and those who potentially can detach themselves from the regime to be part of that scenario of change. 